How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Now, I want to help you understand and set your expectations on how much power does a solar panel put out when you have an overcast or cloudy sky. Now, I have a very typical day here in late fall and early winter in Illinois, and I want to use that as an example and do a few different tests to show you what you can expect on your own systems. We'll be taking three different data points. We'll be using the Helion 360 watt panels there. I'll use two of those wired in series and then going through a power analyzer into an EcoFlow Delta Pro. And then I'll do that same test across four different 100 watt Thunderbolt panels from Harbor Freight and similarly go going through a power analyzer and then into an EcoFlow Delta Pro. Now we'll run those two setups kind of in the core sunlight hours of the day and then see how much did we produce. What percentage of the rated power for these setups did we actually produce on this cloudy day? In addition, I'll also show you what I produced at my home, which is an 11.3 kilowatt professionally installed system. Combining all those together, we should set on a percentage or at least a small range that you can use when you're designing your own DIY solar system. So I'm just using two of these 360 watt panels wired in series. So that would be a maximum of 720 watts. Now you guys should know, when you see the rated capacity on panels, that is under what's called standard test conditions or STC. So you're very rarely going to see 360 watts, even on a sunny day, depending on when that is during the day, if there's any haze in the sky, what season you're in. There's multiple different factors that that depends on. So you can see we are in series. So then these little power analyzers are what we use to get the sample point. Now we don't have to be overly accurate here and this is just a spot check so it will fluctuate as the EcoFlow Delta Pro has an MPPT charge controller in it and that charge controller is trying to make the most out of what we're getting. But right now we're only running in about 44 watts and remember that is on a maximum of 720 watts. This is with the two Helions in series but we're also running four 100 watt panels here in series. So that would be a maximum of 400. And the challenge here is even when you get low here, so we're lower in terms of wattage and it looks like the charge controller in the EcoFlow Delta Pro is having a tough time really locking in on the optimal point. So you'll see there's a lot of fluctuation in your voltage and then that brings your wattage up and down. So this is something to note in your own system, depending on how you're designing it and what charge controller you're using. If you're near the lower end of the range of your charge controller, you could have an issue like this where it's really struggling to lock in maybe on a cloudy day. So just take that in mind as you're designing your own system out. And then just for your reference, from a cloudiness perspective, we do have a few breaks of sunlight, but overall it is pretty overcast and it's been this way throughout the trials that I'm running. And I'm just gonna take multiple spot checks and then average those out on these two setups to get what percentage of the overall maximum from the panels that we're actually getting today. And then for my home setup, the 11.3 kilowatts that I got installed in my home, that's a professionally installed system. I just monitored that through the Enlighten app that's put out by Enphase. So Enphase are the micro inverters that are under each one of those panels. And then you have down to the panel monitoring capability where I can monitor. Now I did earlier in the day when the sun was out produce all the way up to about 8.2 kilowatts, which is in the 70% of the overall rated capacity. So we were cranking earlier in the day, but when we were testing these setups here, my home setup was also just producing a small fraction of its rated power. Now, if you guys are thinking about a professionally installed system for your home and you wanna get an idea on the estimate of cost and what size you would need, there's a link in the description where I started off to get that price and start putting in information for my own home so I could start planning. In that estimator, it's going to take years and years and years of data into account so that they size your system to offset for cloudy days such as this and average out really sunny days where you're overproducing. So just know that's baked into the background. 
on that estimator. Now, if you're doing your own DIY system and you want to get some data from years and years, you can look up PV Watts on Google and you'll go over to the NREL, National Renewable Energy Lab website, where they pretty much have data across the country for years and years and years, and they'll be able to average out what you can expect over months and years, opposed to just taking spot checks like this. These spot checks are good because it just gives you an understanding of the system, but if you want a system that's gonna perform for years and years, you probably need to go over long-term historical data to make the best decision. Speaking of data, I have the data right here from those three different setups, so let's take a look. System one is the 400 watts, the four 100 watt panels in series. System two, the 720 watts, that's the two Helion 360s in series. And then my home setup on system number three. I took five different test points every 15 minutes and then I averaged those out. So the average for system one was 33.6 watts produced from that system. So a small fraction, but all the other systems were similar. System two on average produced 51 watts, and then my home system produced an average of 500 watts. So if we divide that by the rated power, that's where we get what percentage were we putting out during cloudy conditions or overcast conditions. System one did the best, but we did have a lot of fluctuation there. So there is probably some error in the data. That was 8.4%. System two was 7.1 and system three was 4.4, which resulted in an average of during the test period, we only produced 6.6% of the rated power. So you can see producing under 10% on the cloudy day where it's cloudy all day, that is something that you do need to plan for if you're designing your own system. But let me know what you guys are seeing. If you have your own systems, you have your own experience, what percentage of your overall rated power do you guys see on cloudy days? And if you're interested in looking at some of the new capability of an EcoFlow power stations that's coming out in early 2024, check out this video right here and I'll dive into some of the cool features on the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra that is really pushing the boundaries of what a power station can deliver. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.